Well friends, some of you may know that the shop specializes in things that you can't find anywhere else. This weather cover, for example, is made for an electronic lock that was not meant to be outside, so we need to protect it from the weather. This sits behind the lock, and the top slopes down, so the water runs away from the lock. The problem is it doesn't fit right. This edge right here is too sharp. It needs to, it needs to be curved, like on the back end of a metal electrical box. Now you see how the back end of that electrical box is curved? I need to duplicate that shape. Now the way they make those electrical boxes is that they have a big stamp and die set and a big, a big ram just comes down and stamps it out. And I don't have a tool to do that. But what I do have is the benefit of YouTube channels like Ron Covell. Now he is an expert sheet metal worker, does lots of great stuff with sheet metal, and I'll leave a card to his channel up in the corner. Using techniques I learned in his videos, we're going to see if we can come up with a better rendition of this weather cover. And the first thing we're going to need is a rounded surface to bend the sheet metal around. And uh, since I don't have one, what we're going to do is weld this piece of 3 8 steel bar onto the edge of the table, and that will give us our curved surface to work with. So the first thing we'll do is weld it in place, then come back with a flat disc and smooth it off so that weld mark doesn't leave a texture in the new sheet metal that we're bending. Now we're going to employ some CAD. Not computer-aided design, cardboard-aided design. This project is yet another in a very long list that proves you never know what you're going to see on this channel. But if you hit that notification bell, you'll get a notice every time I post something new. Okay, so we'll roll that and get a nice curve going around there and then we'll wrap it around. Okay, so I've scribed the line along the edge there and lined that up with the very edge of the table. Now we've got this piece of one inch plate We'll clamp that down to securely hold the small edge and then bend the rest of the sheet around the corner. And that's not following the curve the best, so I'm going to get on there and help it with a block of wood. Now that gave me just what I wanted, that same downward slope on the top. Now we'll come back in with the cardboard template and I want to make sure that I capture that curve on the very top of the back. Now you see we've got our nice rounded back and what I'm going to do now is fold the sides in and tie those rounded sides in as well. Something's going to have to happen in the corner there but I can figure that out. So here I'm cutting out more relief in the corner so I can bend that side around a little more and then I'll come in and capture the shape of the back of the side. Then I'll transfer that shape onto the back of the main body. Now we'll cut out those reliefs and fold those in and hopefully that'll all fit right. Then we'll give it a little persuasion with the dead blow mallet and begin to tack it all together.
You notice I'm using a bunch of very small tacks on this because I don't want to run the risk of burning through or warping it. Then we'll smooth off those tack welds with the flap disc and make it nice and pretty. Alright, it's not too bad. It's a little bit misshapen. I think I'm going to clean it up so I got all the welds clean first. Then we'll shape it back into the right shape. Well, the heat warped it a little bit, but I think we just bend it back. All right, that's looking good. Now, the fact of the matter is I don't need all this backing plate at all, but I did want to capture that rounded edge around the whole perimeter. And that's why we built it. Now we'll cut out what we don't need. Well, that looks just about right. So this first rendition took me about two hours to build. And then what you've just seen building this is easily another five hours. So that's basically a whole day plus travel time. And I'd like to be able to show you the final installation of this thing, but I don't think that's going to happen. Unfortunately, the client has threatened to hire someone else to finish the job and deduct whatever he charges from what she claims she was going to pay me. And here's how I feel about threats. Once one is issued, as far as I'm concerned, you've carried it out. The fact of the matter is she couldn't have had this job done for four times what I charged. So this is the last time I'll ever take a job where I have to do an install at the client's property because the situation right now is I could go install this thing and be done with this job in five minutes, but she's got me locked out because she wants to be there and place new demands on me when this isn't precisely what she expected. I can tell you this, she won't find anybody to make one of these at any price, but she damn sure ain't getting this one. There we go. That's unfortunate. If you don't have to work with clients, don't. Anyway, thanks for stopping in. Click up here to see my last video. Click over here to see something of mine that YouTube thinks you'll like. And have a good one.